much, Marco Cagliari here on Montreal Rocks. So thank you for accepting our invitation for this interview. So um, I want to just start right, right, right away. So asking you because you are uh, you are following now a new project called the Molotov Mon Amour, but you also very well known uh, uh, as Marco Cagliari, which is actually your name, and you have a very interesting path because it started from a, a metal band, very famous here, in Montreal Anonymous, and then you switched to world music uh, up till uh, Molotov Mon Amour, which as very interesting influences that we're going to talk about them later but if you can give us just a little bit of your uh, background in few words i know it's a huge career but uh... <laughs> that's right well first of all thank you francesca thank you for all your your help uh, as a journalist thank you very much it's really appreciated uh, well my name is marco cagliari i'm italian origin i'm born here in montreal uh, so uh, italian french english uh, languages that i speak um at very young age uh for when i was 14 with my uh, my best friends at school so two spanish uh, twins uh, and one chileno we started a band called anonymous anonymous uh, written in latin uh, which is was very influenced by heavy metal, pure heavy metal. So right. we're talking about influences from Metallica, Pantera, Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, and all these classic uh, right. metal bands. Uh, and uh, the particularity of Anonymous is that we started writing in uh, in French. Actually, the first right. album that we came out with in 1994 uh, is called Ni vu ni connu. So it's mm -hmm. a full full length French album because uh, our uh, we're we're bill 101 kids uh, so we're born in uh, uh in the same time as the bill 101 that takes uh, okay. how do you say that uh, keeps the the francophones alive and the francophonie alive if i can say in in a couple of words yes so anonymous anonymous was born in 1989 we were 14 years old and has never stopped anonymous is still going on it okay. has never never quit so it's been 32, 33 years, 33 years this year that Anonymous is a living. Uh, they have 11 albums. I did the five first albums. Okay. Unique, Stress, uh, Instinct, um, Demonium, and uh, L'Académie du Massacre. And you have to understand singer, that Anonymous... Singer and uh, guitar player, we're, right? We're two singers. The bassist, uh, bassist singer, Oscar Sauto, and mm -hmm. me, Marco Cagliari, uh, the guitar, guitar singer, uh, when I left, Oscar uh, sung more songs okay. uh, and Carlos Araya, the drummer, started picking up uh, some some lyrics also. So uh, and another band member came in, Jeff Fortin, uh, who I know very well. He used to he used to play in uh, not play, but he used to work for the band as a technician. Mm -hmm. uh, so Anonymous has always gone on. I did 17 years with them, five albums. For me, it's a. Uh, uh, it's very, I, I, don't, I don't know how to say it, but even French, so or uh, Italian, What's yes, that? any any language. I'm very uh, orgoglioso, very of, proud. Uh, yes, I'm very proud of, of having been in this amazing band with a great philosophy, a great friendship. And I always come back in the band, uh, once in a while, like for the anniversaries, 20th, 25th, uh, 30th. Uh, and in the last, la my last solo album, I invited Anonymous in my album. And now it gets me to, to talk about my solo career. Uh, since uh, 2004, well, actually 2001, at the same time that I was in Anonymous, I started a solo career in world music, singing in Italian. Because actually, if I, I was always uh, very uh, touched by Italian culture, Italian language. And I have many influences, even though I've, I'm from Trentino, Puglia, and Milano. I have all these 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 um, different uh, different zone cultural zones in Italy from my mom and dad. Uh, but for me, Renato Carosone, Fabrizio De André, La Banda Bardo, uh, uh, all these different names, uh, old school traditional music, and also new music that I love to mix, but my sound is very traditional because of the instruments that I use, accordion, trumpet, stand-up bass, tuba, uh, clarinet. I love organic music, organic instruments. So that's what I started working with 
for my solo album, for my solo albums. Mm -hmm. So in 2004, I got my first solo album out called Que La Vita. Uh, one Napolitan song, one anonymous song oh, okay. uh, in world music, and the rest all compositions. And when I when I when I got this album out, it just exploded here in Quebec, and I started having a career, a solo career. So from there, I'm, I've been living uh, of my music because of Italian world music that I just exposed. And from there, I really live out of just playing music. So uh, since 2004 about. And since then, I've done six solo albums. So five heavy metal albums, six solo albums. And I was, I was saying my last solo album was called Cagliari Bang Bang. I'm still touring because of the pandemic and all of this. So there's still dates. Uh, Uh, with this, yeah. this show and there's also in the album there's uh there's features from italy and there's also features from uh, anonymous uh my metal band because i wanted them to to explore in world music also in my world music so there's a little bit of crunchiness <laughs> of raunchiness and crunchiness uh, a lot of guitars but always mixed with this world uh, organic music Yeah, and then you landed the, to this new project, Molotov yes. Mon Amour, that to me, it, it has a very, very interesting sound because there is that kind of uh, electronic background somehow. And it reminds me a lot of the 80s, like in the, in the good ways, like the good 80s, you yes. know, that makes it like great guitars and, uh, you know, uh, piano, instrumental, but in, in uh, you know, keyboards, electronic mm -hmm. keyboards. So there's a lot, a lot there. So, and I want, I want to know why this, uh, where this new form that actually Marco Cagliari assumed <laughs> uh, came from. Well, if, uh, to, to tell a, a, a long story short, sure. Molotov Mon Amour um, is, first of all, is from uh, my, my, uh, mon envie, uh, my envy of, of doing something in French. Because everybody knows me, yes, from, well, some people know me from Anonymous, singing French, English, Spanish, Italian with that band. After that, in Italian with Marco Cagliari and... Now, well, now, since many years, actually, I've been wanting to propose something in French. So I've been writing songs uh, and, and also exchanging with Pasquale Caruana, which is, uh, Pasquale Caruana is a good friend of mine who's, uh, mm -hmm. he, he uh, produced uh, a couple of my solo albums. He has a very rock, heavy metal uh, background. Um, and from there, we started uh, sharing songs and me writing lyrics on these songs that we've been Uh, like opening up together and just writing together. And from there, there's another uh, person that's in this project that's called Danny Lalonde. Danny Lalonde is, uh, is a drummer, but he's a multi-instrumentalist. He's, he's an amazing guitarist okay. and bassist and keyboardist also. He does a little bit of everything. I do a little bit of everything too. Pasquale too. So all together, us three together, we mix up some stuff. We've been mixing up some songs since like five, six years. Okay. So these songs have been really working, uh, is, a, is a working progress since a couple of years. And I finally decided to take one single out, one at a time. Mm -hmm. So last year, we got the first single out called Stem. Okay. And the second one just came out now on February 1st, called Si C'était Toi. Uh, and this year, while well, my, my goal is to or get an EP out, of maybe three, four new songs uh, or just get a couple of singles out because I haven't done any shows yet under yeah. Molotov Mon Amour. This is one goal that I want to attend. Uh, in, two, in 2023, I want to start playing live Molotov Mon Amour, but also always having in parallel my Italian world music. Uh, so you're going to keep, uh, keep continuing being the Marco Cagliari, yes. <laughs> already known uh, to the majority of the public. It's so also cannot... what pills, it's also what pays my bills. So I really <laughs> can't really let it go. You have to say that for sure. Yeah. But anyway, but besides that, it's, uh, it's great. I, um, uh, I've been watching some of your shows and it's fantastic because you also rearrange uh, classic from the Italian traditions and you rearrange them, reinvent them and put like the, the Marco Cagliari signature in them. And it's great. So <clears throat> I really looking forward to, to see and to have the chance to watch you performing as Molotov Mon Amour. I'm pretty curious. Can't wait. So, I can't wait. <laughs> so you told me like you three guys, you've been working on different sound and stuff, but there are, uh, are there any specific influences, like something that really 
on on the side of the music and the sound, of mm -hmm. course, but also on the side of well, you know, I, I, I want to do this project. I want to call it Malot of Manamur because mm -hmm. of that and that. So what's the ideology behind, but also what is the sound behind where, where it came from? Uh, well, the sound is a, is a little bit of, a, it's a little bit of trying to think out of the box. Mm -hmm. uh, really think of, you know, what I would naturally do. I'm very world oriented, so so uh, even in, he in heavy metal, uh, I, I pick up my classical guitar and I write riffs and chords and stuff like that. But so with Molotov Mon Amour is starting with this basic, you know, just guitar, classical guitar. And from there, putting other stuff on it, like a little bit more modern sound. So then the modern sound is really uh, working with, with uh, keyboards, with uh, very greasy, uh, greasy sounding keyboards. I love it when they're really low keys um, and trying to trying to really uh, maybe, you know, when, once you put some keyboards and, uh, and a, a, a drum riff, uh, drum uh, rhythm and guitar riffs also, you take out the classical guitar and really it becomes something else. So it's really trying to, to get out of, of our normal uh, ways of, of working and yeah. Working with Dani and also Pasquale, they give me they give me new ideas. Like this uh, latest, my second single called mm -hmm. Ceci Toi, you hear the classical guitar. Yeah, it's different from the first one actually. So really, start, we we kept it because the feeling, uh, you know, really blending the feeling of the modern sound and also the the traditional sound of of a guitar of classical guitar there was something really special uh, of keeping it but we tried so many things it's not just like we we did a song uh, for the fun of it and we got it out the next day we've been working on versions and versions and versions to really come up with the ones that, that we were um that we were really proud of so so i think it's a you know it's it's a it's a work in uh, not in progress but it's a teamwork mm -hmm. that i love to do with Malatov mon amour and also the influences. Well, I'm I'm an artist that 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 listens to many many things. I'm, you know, as I'm as much as a, a fan of Jacques Brel uh, okay. or a fan of Arcade Fire. You know, I love bands like Arcade Fire that are really okay. up to date and more than up to date. They 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 try to I don't know how to say it, but they 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 always have a a, a step in front of the other before somebody comes out with something and i'm really really uh fond of, of this and listening to these things i'm a big fan of blonde redhead i don't know if you know blonde redhead oh. i'm a huge fan of blonde redhead and it's it's one okay. of the write it down blonde redhead it, it, it's actually uh when i discovered this band like in 2000 uh my god maybe 2001 or something i was in actually i discovered them in torino uh, at Hiroshima Mon Amour. This is very funny. Yeah. Hiroshima Mon Amour, which is a, a mythical, mythical uh, venue in, uh, in Torino. Ah, it's uh, also I, a venue. I was thinking about the movie. It's the movie, yeah. but, but it's a venue, a very important Good venue video. in Torino. Yes. It's like a Fufun Electric, if you know Montreal, yeah. uh, Fufun Electric, but version, uh, Torino okay. version. A little less heavy metal, but all the hipsters go there. Uh -huh. And I was there with my cousin Ariana from Torino and she, you know, I was just there that night and she goes, oh, let's go to Hiroshima Mon Amour. I get in there. There's a cover charge. I don't know, maybe 15 euros. We pay. We go there and there's this band playing in front of 500, 600 people I, that I discovered. Blonde Reddit. I love them. I, I, can't, I just fell in love with their sound. They're one of the first, like... Um, they came out with a sound before the, the style of hipster sound came out. They're like the, the veterans of hipster sounding. So they use a lot of guitars, keyboards. They're two uh, Italian twins. Mm -hmm. they, they live in New York. They're, uh, they, they're called uh, Pachi. I think it's Pachi, their, uh, their last names. Amedeo and Simone Pachi. And there's, uh, I think the other uh, member is a Japanese. I, don't, I never remember her name. Huh? But an amazing band. You have to listen to this. So maybe That's this is one influence, especially for the drumming. It's just crazy. Uh, it's it's perfect drumming. It's 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 out of think, out of the box. 
when you know instead of doing like the first beat that comes out you you try the second one or the fourth one and then the songs just just pop up differently and in a, in a more uh, um, original way if I can say okay that's so nice and the name Molotov Mon Amour mm. the name is actually um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, a not a hint but a, a Oh my God, I'm looking for my words, sorry. I'm going to give you a little bit of a scoop. Bah, I'm looking okay, for the, wow, see? A scoop because uh, I'm, I'm also working with an artist called Paul Caniello. Paul Caniello is an artist from Montreal, amazing huh? author, uh, songwriter, and he's also a producer. We know each other since many years. And a couple of years back, he comes to me without even knowing, uh, he didn't know that I had a project that I wanted to do in French. Uh, in this style. So he just, we were together and he goes, oh, would you like a couple of songs? Because he writes so many songs that he has some that he doesn't use. So he, he, he sends me two songs. And in one of these songs, uh, he says the word, the phrase, Veux-tu être mon Molotov? Do you oh, want okay. to be my Molotov? Be Molotov? And I love this phrase. I just love it. it the, I don't know. It, and this, this phrase inspired me, Molotov, mon amour. Because there's something of, uh, I like to, to play uh, with also the words that I write in Molotov Mon Amour. I like to play with the, 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 the gap in between, okay. and, well, between Different love meaning, and hate. Yeah, like Molotov et Amour. Et Amour. Yeah, things. Yeah. Shtem yeah. is the same thing. The first single is called Shtem, but with the word Aïe. Aïe in remember. French means hate. And in French, uh, you, there's really the word hate in the word Uh, love <laughs> in English it doesn't work but in French yeah. I -E -M, I -E fits in M so uh, I work with this duality and uh, so Molotov Mon Amour is from there Tem is from there Si C'était Toi talks about mental illness yeah. it has something to do with all this uh, love and hate also so there's all these themes that come back they come uh -huh. back uh, uh, and so so The scoop is that I am working on two songs that Paul Carniello uh, sent me a couple of years back, and I've been, I've been, I've been doing like a, how do you say, like a laboratory work okay. in finding the right, the right, uh, yeah, exactly. The, so, uh, but I'm, I'm really actually this. Maybe the third single will be one of these songs because there's one oh, of them, okay. but I'm, I'm totally. Um, oh. Uh, I'm I'm exactly. in love with it with uh, the words that he put. So so next the next one could be words and music from Paul Carniello, but arranged we arranged by, by me, Italian. Pasquale, and Danny. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm so curious. Do you have already mind a period or a date for your third release? Actually, no. Uh, no I, within I, the year, you you mean you this year for sure? It's this year. Okay. This year it's or or two singles, two new singles, or. Uh, an EP. Well, I didn't. I didn't um, decide yet. Okay. So um, your latest release. We've been talking a bit about it. Yes. Cité toi. Oui. Uh, Cité. Okay. We oui. uh, first. Uh, first uh, February. February first. Yeah. So and uh, besides the the sound that we've been talking about, the sound of this new project, but also like uh, as you just said, like mental health. Yeah. Now we are we'll be listening a lot, hearing a lot about mental health because of the pandemic. But mm -hmm. the, the, it was there even even before. I know also that you're involved with the with the local uh, project too concerning yes. that. So um, why it's so important? Why you wanted to put these lyrics into this song and let the world hear in them? And why it's so important also to talk about mental health, not only because of pandemic, but because. Yeah, yeah. I mean, It's well, men mental illness is uh, uh, beyond the pandemic. It was all. It was already a topic. It's already a topic since the beginning of time. Uh, you know, uh, we all have the uh, sequel. We all have uh, mm -hmm. issues. Yeah. Uh, everybody has their own uh, their own path, and uh, uh, and for sure, me it always touched me a lot. Mental illness and also. Um, it, the deficiency intellectual mm. um it's kind of it's different but deficiency no? yeah exactly exactly yeah. 
yeah. I work a lot with with uh, on deficiency intellectual. Okay. Uh, I work with uh, with uh, an organism that that's called uh, an organization that's called the uh, Regroupement Québécois de Parrainage Civic. Parrainage Civic is parrainage means um, partenariat, mm -hmm. no? The pairing. It's like godfathering. Ah, godfathering. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, civical, civic godfathering, if we okay. can, if, if we oh, translate. Yeah. And it, these, this organization works with, uh, uh, they believe in, uh, in creating links between, uh, between somebody that just mm -hmm. wants to, uh, to uh, partage, sorry, to, to, um, yeah, to share. See, to share, thank you. Uh, he wants to share uh, some time uh some some uh ev not events but really some time once a week once a month with somebody that lives with in deficiency intellectual and what 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 this creates this this uh this link creates is an openness that that some people uh they're so closed in with them the, because of their illness uh they're closed inside they're afraid to go outside they're afraid to go at the at the park they're afraid to go to the cinema because because they have no um they don't have nobody to show them the way or just to just to, to give them confidence so this is what they do and they've been doing this for for like 20 years uh they have got 30 of 30 parents in quebec i'm the spokesperson since six years now and i'm actually i i'm becoming a godfather like now i just Uh, I just found my uh, fiel, my my godson, yeah, called Max. He's two years old, and we're gonna start doing activities um, together, um, starting like in in two weeks from now. We're starting nice. to go to the movies and stuff like that, just to help out, and it really helps. It the, little things be, are are Make you for them. It's uh, it, it gives them. Uh, I I see it as a how do you say the uh, zel the uh, leali. It yeah, gives them, it wings gives them, that amazing. What do you say uh, in English? Wings, wings. wings. wings thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so that's it. So, so this is uh, this is something that I do with them. And to come back to the song, um, the song was actually, um, for I wrote it a couple of years ago, actually after uh, after seeing um, Les Attentats de Paris, the, the Paris. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, It really a struck. terroristic attack in Paris. It was November 2000, 15? 2016. 15 or no, 15? 15, 15, 15. Sorry, 14. I think it was the 14th November 2015. At the, the uh, don't remember the name of the club right now, but uh, Bataclan. Bataclan, Bataclan. 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 Yeah. Yes. Well, during all these events, uh, Charlie Hebdo and all these, it, well, it, it struck everybody, all, all everybody from around the world, around the world. But for me. One of the first images that that came out of this is, wow. Okay, you know, every day we take we take the metro, we take the the bus, we go to the shopping center, whatever. We go, we do our little uh, our things to do, and and but we uh, we across so many people and so many uh, eyes and people, and it it fascinated me at one point that that you know how many people that we cross in our life that were uh, very um, very sensible to maybe uh, having a, a, a psychotic uh, psychose, yeah. uh, a breakdown, exa exactly. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of the people that, that, that went to the point to do these things. Mm. It's really intense. Uh, it's very intense. But, you know, for that, I started writing in this optic Uh, but for sure that it blends everybody you know everybody is uh, is really um, a very um, very close to maybe having a breakdown especially maybe now in pandemic uh, but i think it's important it's a it's a pretty dark song but it, but sometimes it's important to to really to put it out there you know the video clip of si c'était toi is really about this Uh, It really mirrors yeah. what you were saying, like meeting people around. It's a black and white video, very well done, uh, very straightforward. And I like the uh, that it's interspaced with uh, images 
are uh, people that I, some of them I recognize because they're yeah. close to you. <laughs> like my but, daughter, uh, my girlfriend, and my dad. Actually, exactly. my dad, you see, this is an example. My dad uh, is living um, very, very dif uh, difficult times. Uh, my mother is not well, and he has, uh, he has all this on his, on his shoulders. Every day, he tells me that he's not doing well. Every day. And I'm the only one with my sister that can tell him that we have to, uh, I have to tell him, I have to speak to him about other situations. Like, you know, we're lucky. We have a family. We're a family and we're doing everything that we can. So you have to think of all, every time you think it's not, it's not great. Well, think that it could be worse. So, so you have to come back to the, the origin and the simple things. And, you know, just a video clip. I call my dad, dad, papa, meet me at uh, this corner. We're, we're filming a video. So, okay. He's like, oh, okay, what do you want again? Whatever. But I know he's happy because I'm making him, you know, I'm making do something different than just staying yeah. at, with my mom. And he was in the video, but I know, and now you know, anybody that's watching us now, when you're going to see the video and when you're going to get to my dad's expression, he's not an actor. He's living, you're going to see through his eyes exactly what I'm just, I, what I just told you. He's living di very difficult moments. And this is the song about, the song is about all these people from, from whatever uh, background, uh, age, uh, we're all living something. And sometimes you can see it, but sometimes you can't see it. That's the hard thing also. That's this very difficult difficult and mental I, I have to say i enjoyed i enjoyed like i uh perceive very much the depth of uh, of the video and the song and i think it really mirrors uh, like the reality you're talking about because uh, like uh, we never know behind uh, a smiling face uh, what could be behind mm -hmm. that you know and we're kind of forced by this society to kind of you know just like every time being positive and smile but that's I mean it's hard it's hard uh, for people that really have you know diseases and that we can see but even like these are these uh subtle in the in the sense that you cannot exactly. see them but they are exactly. real and um exactly. it's good that you actually uh put this out with the with the music and i think like this should be kind of some of the message that the music is bringing up to us is actually to talk about the things that are hard to talk but maybe with a song and exactly. video. And I like exactly. the video. The, the, so you told me you directed the video and um, Christina Pelletier, uh, yeah. she edited the... Um, she yeah, with, edited. Uh, with another girl also, Sabrina, which is a new, uh, we found her uh, from, uh, from a contact, a new contact. Sabrina Cote, uh, my God, what's her name again? I want to <laughs> say her, the right name. Sabrina Cote Poitra, because now we all have two... Two family names. And Italians don't do this, but elsewhere oh, they no. do this. <laughs> Whatever. All these names. Um, so Sabrina did uh, most of the editing. Okay. Uh, the idea came from me. I wanted. I really wanted to film uh, exactly how I wrote the song. I wrote the song thinking of of all these people that we meet every day. So mm -hmm. I wanted to, to have crowds of people. And it was very hard because... We filmed in on December 21st mm -hmm. and everything was like was 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 coming back down because of the pandemic. Yes, because it yes. was closing back. So but I wanted, you know, I wanted crowds. So oh my god, it was it wasn't easy. But in the metro, there was still a lot of people going out. But around. <laughs> my, my goal was to get more people, but it's okay. We we get the point. That's the important thing. And from there, Christina came up with the idea of doing the studio work. Uh, with really having uh, a couple of actors like my dad and uh, my daughter. Um, but there's a real, real actress in the video called Dominique Daou, which mm. is the first one that we see. She has uh, blonde, curly, curly yeah, hair. Yeah, okay, yes. She's, she's a real actress. And uh, I, have to, I have to say the first time that we got the, the first version uh, of the video, uh, I cried. I, when I saw her face, I cried the... Uh, it was it was too strong. There was really something. That's the power of uh, of music, but also of acting. And when you put both together, this is, you know, it's an art. Cinema, mm -hmm. video clips, movies, and uh, 
and uh, and songs it's an art and when you when you're all connected no oh, that's so true and also happy. i believe i'm so happy that now we are giving back again uh, like uh we're putting back again like we're giving more spotlight to video like it was i remember in the 90s 80s like these videos were really narrative oh. videos histories okay. like stories about love hate drama and now in my mind there are like the guns and roses videos like there was so much <laughs> going on there like oh, yeah. the cigarettes and uh and uh, and alcohol like which today kind of like you can't uh, do that impossible. anymore yeah exactly they were smoking and drinking i was like what but anyways like i think he would you say this right like it's, it's beautiful when images and actors can convey what lyrics and music can do so putting that together um mm -hmm. it's beautiful i think a good video can give uh, can add to a great song oh it's yeah beautiful. i think it can it's always it's always um it's always a good push not a push but a good duo to really yeah. have an image yeah. behind it you know where i i have the same uh how can i say uh, you know i have the same generation as you living uh, uh, growing up with music videos yeah. and for me a song goes with an image you know it's it's the same thing for me so when i hear something or when i see something i can put a song to it or vice versa but yeah. so it's important and you know even with my my next singles i what we already have ideas for the videos and uh, we have really good ideas i can't wait to put them and and it's fun because um christina is uh um she's evolving uh, in this uh, in the video clip world oh, nice. she really because she did the video clip from celestina celestina's song from from my album cagliari bang bang okay. she did the uh, uh, she did c'était toi it's kind of like her second video clip uh and now she's working you're gonna i'm gonna send you in a couple of weeks or another video clip but from marco cagliari from my cagliari bang bang even if bang bang came out in january 2019 we're still putting out video clips because we didn't have any funding so and i still didn't get any funding from for my cagliari bang bang but i was sad about you know not putting more yeah more more effort in in promoting Cagliari Bang Bang because for me Cagliari Bang Bang is is a 30 year anniversary album for me so it was so important and not a, not having funding for this album it, it kind of broke my heart so I'm still in that minding I still want to push Cagliari Bang Bang and you're going to freak out because the next video is just crazy okay it's, I can't wait it's hollywood it's hollywood wow <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I, I think all the people also that are following us on montreal rocks now they know they will be ready i'm waiting for that yeah so, can wait so uh, marco you were um you were telling us like some a little bit of project so malato mon amor another single going out um yeah. heading toward it's releasing 2022 always 2022 and hopefully 23 we're gonna have some so, live shows yeah. so but marco carliari with the word music um any projects uh, now like this year upcoming uh... yeah well now the new video is coming out on march 1st okay. um of the first song of the album uh, which is called la ventura which is a cover song from domenico modugno it's a Western spaghetti, so you're going to go. It's amazing, the video. Okay, so that's wait. coming out on March 1st. And or else I'm doing shows. I've got a lot of shows uh, since yesterday. Uh, a lot of shows have started to book themselves. I have my, I have a, um, an agent, a booking agent that, mm -hmm. that works for me. And since yesterday, there's already five, six shows that popped up in the calendar. Amazing. So uh, 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 all in Quebec. But, you know, on uh, February 18th, I'm going to be... Uh, in Center Stash, uh, okay. April 9th, I'm in, um, sorry, I'm in Whedon, Whedon, which is in Quebec. Um, okay. In Montreal, uh, Ville La Salle, I'll be on uh, April 1st, I'll be there, uh, Saint-Henri Le Mieux. So there's really dates. If you go on marcocagliari.com, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a shows, a show link, whatever. Or else you go on my, my socials, uh, Marco Cagliari Musica. Uh, on uh, Facebook or Instagram is Marco Cagliari MTL. Uh, there's there's shows there all all year, so I'm I'm really happy. It's going to be a really good year. Fantastic, and uh, we definitely need that. 
So, yeah. and on this note, I want to ask you, like, um, uh, what's your uh, what's your uh, opinion? What's your idea concerning like the future of the music scene here in Montreal? Because we know we've been having for a long time a great music scene. There are many independent artists, uh, also like great artists, strong artists, not just independent but independently great. <laughs> and uh, but now, like uh, you know, Quebec is just like with all the restriction and stuff. Uh, we're looking at many venues closing. So, what's your um, the, your pulse on this situation right now and your wishes actually for the future yeah well you know what i i'm gonna i'm gonna uh i'm gonna talk about this uh, in a very optimistic way because uh because in quebec there's something really really uh beautiful that's happening and that is the 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 just the uh, there's really a lot of of uh, relève. How do you say relève? Uh, um, of, of new yeah, really artists. And... No, no, I, I, no, no. Yeah, relève uh, might be like an injection of new artists. Like yes, there, okay. there's not less. We we think maybe worldwide because of the pandemic. Maybe there there's some that have been discouraged mm. and have stopped uh, trying. Uh, but in Quebec, I don't feel that at all. I, at all, actually, I'm, I listen to a lot of EC music, and there's a lot of new music every day. There's new songs, new music, and just me coming out with my new single. Uh, some radio stations are telling me, like, man, we received like 40 new songs, and we have to pick three of them. Oh my god! So this is crazy. this is it's crazy. It's amazing. I I see good in this, even if it's harder for me yeah. to to. to, to to, to keep I don't know how to say it but you know just to, to, to come find out your, uh, to find your spot to find, yeah, to find my spot but bon, I, I I've been you know I have a certain name it's never it's never easy it's very actually very hard to really come back up uh, mm. out of this but um, I'm very optimistic uh, in general okay because we have a structure here in Quebec it's Canada but Quebec has a, a very uh, defined structure between festivals, venues, mm -hmm. uh, uh, halls, uh, there's really, uh, and the, everybody talks to each other. So, so there's something really good and there's always space for everyone. It's harder for some, that's for sure. It's harder for me also uh, sometimes, you know, I was talking about Molotov and Cagliari Bang Bang, not having funding. Uh, People, people think that because you have 33 years of career and 11 albums that you just say, hey, I've got a new album. Uh, can you help me? And they give you money. No, it's not the way it works. Know, it, you yeah. really have to. You're always in the same. Uh, you have to wait in line. It's You don't pass in front of every, anybody. So it's, you know, it, it makes uh, this kind of uh, uh, reality makes us work even harder to get results to get real results sometimes it's harder uh, sometimes it's you you feel like crap and you feel like you just want to throw everything in the back of your head but but you have but it's keep... also a push to do better yeah. and so i would just want to i want to give this message to everybody that we have to stay optimistic and we have something really great here in quebec that we have a structure and we just have to keep on 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 helping each other out Perfect, Marco. Thank you so much. And actually, um, since you have a, such an extended career, because you're very young, <laughs> since we share the same... Uh, Thank you. The same, uh, <laughs> so, but you have really an extensive career, as you know, we've been talking. And so if people want to know, and uh, yeah. probably... So they can even purchase uh, your biography, Yes. Bang Bang, written by our common friend Andrea Gozzi. Andrea Gozzi, exactly. So, curated by him. So this is a beautiful uh, book. So this Thank is you. I think, French and in, in, uh, in Italian. Is in French there's, and Italian. There's no English uh, version, sorry. Not yet, maybe. Not yet. You, you <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, Marco. Thank you for being us with the Montreal Rocks and uh, good luck uh for uh, all your future project and for sure we're gonna talk uh, again in the future hopefully and thank you because you uh, francesca you you're uh well you how can i say this you you're always helping out in the scene and you know i'm talking about optimistic uh, uh in an optimistic way quebec and that's because of of you because of journalists like like you 
thank that you. want to know more and want to want to spread out more and more news. So thank you very, very uh, much. Thank you, Mark. And we can say we, we rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, ciao, Marco. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Ciao.